Everyone is loading in now. Um, no real need for the pick screen because it is AR. Not quite sure how it's displayed when you're a spectator because I've never spectated an all random <laughs> kind of picking phase uh, in inverted commas before. Danibus is in the chat channel, but I believe he's just in the bathroom. Might just go to sleep afterwards, but might come and cast as well. So for now, hello everybody, this is the Spectre, and this is a Dota is Hard in-house game. This is our in-house night, which is Wednesday, so if you want to come and join us, please join the chat channel, Dota is Hard. We do usually have in-houses going on every night, um, but Wednesday is our, is our definite big night. So come on by, have your game cast by myself, or maybe, um, maybe uh, one of the other casters, there are quite a few of us going around. Um, uh, I believe one of the others, the Twitch channel is twitch.tv forward slash the black VV. Um, and shout out to Brad Small. Thanks for watching the stream and thanks for playing in the past two games. Um, but yeah, Dota is Hard is a great bunch of friendly Australian and New Zealand players. We range from very low to quite high skill level. Um, we do actually have a few players that frequent it that are in competitive teams. One of them is actually in this game, which is Kaya. Um, some very good plays coming out from him, and I believe his team is in the top 10 of the Cyber Gamers, Cyber Net, something similar, um, which is a, uh, a ladder in Australia and New Zealand, so congrats to him and his team. Um, apparently this is what happens when AR is handed out. We can see the teams now. We have Timbersaw, Pudge, Bloodseeker, Centaur, and Batrider on the Radiant. And Shadow Shaman, Undying Lashon, Everybody gets set. Windrunner on side of the Dire. Um, we might see some repicks come out here, but for now everything looks good. I'm just going to change my overlay now to the in-game. Someone's having technical difficulties. And everyone but the Batrider has come in so far in the Ursa and Windrunner. Windrunner is now in, so it's just if Ursa is going to take up that carry roll, or whether he's going to gamble on a repick. So on the side of the Radiant, we have Tish Basa on Pudge, <laughs> JD on the Bloodseeker, Kaya on the Batrider, Brad Small on the Timbersaw, and Pow Pow Moo on the Centaur. On the side of the Dire, we have K on the Shadow Shaman, Infinity on the Windrunner, Drew 30 on the seconds Ursa, to go. Superlative on the Lashrak, and Dr. Alco on the Undying. At the moment, Centaur is paused out because of lag. We should probably pause the game in a few moments because he hasn't reconnected just yet. So, in fact, I think I'll pause it now. In fact, I can't. So, no, they reconnect with five seconds to go. Looks like they're still trying to figure out lanes. A lot of heroes are still in base and creeps have already spawned. So, the Radiant side going to miss out on a bit of experience. Just kind of milling it around at this point. Um, of course the stream is on a two minute delay, so I'll assume that Brad is going, yeah buddy, to my shout out, so, yeah buddy, nice to see you Brad. <laughs> um, and they've actually swapped heroes, so, JD on the Bloodseeker still, Kaya is now on that Timbersaw, Batrider being taken up by Brad Small, uh, apart from that all the other heroes are the same. So it looks like we're going to be running a couple of dual lanes. We see the Pudge in mid, and I believe the Bloodseeker is actually going to go into the jungle here. I'm um, quite a, a decent decision. Kaya should be able to take out this uh, top lane, tri lane decently. A very talented player does know how to go against those tri lanes. An early lane ward has been placed down by the Radiant. So a good little bit of um, action there. And with an Ursa shadow, you have to be really careful. The Shackle comes out already, but with only a level 1 Ursa, there's not going to be too much follow-up. A lot of auto-attack damage being taken, and the Fury Swipes damage stacking up. Um, but without that uh, that handy-handy overpower, um, there's going to be no kill just yet. Kaya does have to play very defensively against this lane, though. Luckily, the stacking and pulling, not quite done by the Dire. The so... Kai is going to be able to get some experience here, not being able to be zoned out this close to the tower. The K already two stacks up on Kai though, so a bit dangerous, but look at all this experience just waiting to be had. A level already up in the reactive armor, so getting a bit of regen there. 
see if they go for the Whirling Death or whether he just doesn't lose the reactive armor quite low. A Timber Chain there, but not going to be hitting on anything. Bloodseeker quite low on these creeps, in danger of getting killed by this large creep. He's going to back off, we'll probably salve up and then just attempt to kill off that small camp there. I'm sitting at level 2, going decently alright. Still probably in range of the heroes in the tri lane. And we see a slight. Yes, yeah, so I uh, would have liked to have seen a. Uh, would have liked to see a shockwave come out from that uh, Seder Tormentor there. A bit <laughs> of misplay by the creep. A bit of butt blast coming out. And bit something that has been gun. pointed out. I have returned. <laughs> something pointed out by a spectator here is that the die, the die, the radiant has no courier, so Pudge is just sitting here flailing wildly, really wishing that she had that bottle. Quite unfortunate. So, with no courier, it's gonna be hard for Pudge to stay here. Really needs that health regen to spam off the right. And also the mana regen to get some good hooks and maybe even bottle up something like a haste yeah. or an invis rune. I guess lacking a, an obvious uh, support, nobody thought to buy one. <laughs> I think probably for the initial stage, Bloodseeker needed the extra money to go into the jungle. Um, I probably would have liked to see the Timbersaw or the Batrider pick it up. Oh, it was Timbersaw or Bat, definitely. I mean, that's... <laughs> No, no question, but um, obviously not two heroes that are usually going to be picking up the courier, so... Yeah, they probably exactly. just thought, oh, the other one will do it. Oh, Shadow oh, Shaman a bit of trouble here. Up, but it's in the oh, actually, uh, the Shaka coming out and quite a bit of damage being done, but with the reactive armor, able to just stay in there quite decently. Still seven charges on the wand as well. And this is going to be a lot of experience for Kaya under this tower. Um, the stacking and pulling just not happening. I think it was a single pull from the look of it. Um, and Kai is going to be able to take out a lot of experience and gold from this. Missing bottom. Yeah, the uh, Batrider going back now to base to place that career. Definitely. The Ursa and yeah, Shadow Shaman. Waste a bit of time for him, unfortunately. Yeah, Seeing as there are only single pulls. But he has picked up oddly enough. Now. They're gonna take down. He's picked up four ironwood branches. Uh, a little wasteful. Uh, it's good for some early stats in the beginning. Ooh, and a very cool Grieve yeah, coming out there. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it is a. I don't even know. Is it just a level one or a level two? It's a two naked Grieve. It's it a naked like Grieve, but it doesn't have the usual. Um. Yeah, it doesn't say unusual naked, naked Grievel. Eyes, googly Grievel eyes. Yeah, it looks I normal, don't know. though. It's quite odd. But it doesn't have... I've never seen it with the purple eyes. Yeah, if you take a look at his status, like it says it's that magic that... immune and phased. I assume that's true for all couriers, though. Oh, the other... the Grievel oh, on the I other do. side is a merciless Grievel, which should be red, but is also naked and has purple coming out of his eyes. So I would say that the Grievels Maybe are actually bugged to this match. Yeah. Some yeah. Ooh, the Batrider comes in. Yeah, and it also he's flying with no wings. Oh, the naked <laughs> Grievels. No, it's you can see the wings. The the, the, yeah, the... Oh no, he's not the wings this time. Yeah, just kind of flailing around. <gasps> no, it's having an epileptic it's fit. Legit humping the air. <laughs> <laughs> and if we take a look... Boy, the, um, trash me! Ooh. No use crying over spill. Uh, and the suicide comes out from the pudge. Actually, a good play. It wasn't just the first kill, and then oh, I've left rot on, and I'm I'm dying. The edict damage from the Lashrak was still going off after his death, and would have finished off the pudge if he didn't commit suicide there. So a good of a bit of good play there. The centaur, meanwhile, has the tranquil boots up on bottom lane, so. He's going to be able to stay here uh, very easily Radiant's with the, with the movement apart. speed bonus. It's going to be quite good for him to get in range for a stun. Windrun is still playing quite well though. Um, sitting only just behind in last hit, really spamming out that power shot, doing a lot of damage to this centaur at Mission the moment. Middle. Meanwhile, the Shrak is coming down from being inside the jungle. He's going to pick up a haste room. 
on this raid haste. also lacking wards so Pudge not able to control up these runes and if he did pick up that haste rune it definitely would have been a free kill on one of the heroes I know. <laughs> the, uh, the flame break coming out wide and the timber chain missed by Kaya um, but this firefly killing off the um, creeps quite effectively I can not sure if the flame break hurts them. It's looking like it does. Um, it's, quite sure. it's just a it's just a spell. It doesn't not just heroes. No, no. I just thought the zombies were in part magic resistant or something. Uh yeah, they are. But um, it did look like it took two ticks for them to die. So instead of the yeah. usual, you know, one auto attack. So missing bottom. Just a good little spell for for Batrider to. To lay around the tombstone to stop a lot of the damage from those zombies coming out. I'm sure. Oh, that's coming down here. Looks Mr. like he's just gonna jungle. And uh, yeah, it looks like he has, just... of course, got the Ursa uh, fancy face on. <laughs> and it looks like he's also gonna be going for that early Vlad's, of course. Has bought up the boots. A lot of players will skip the boots early on just to buy up the Vlad's quicker. Um, but being in a lane with Shadow Shaman um, and Undying Ninja going for the kills there. Ooh, just missing out on killing the Timber Sword down at 30 health. And the, um, oh, he gets oh, the too Shocker Dam is doing a lot of damage. Take. Look at how low they are. Oh, and he's got the zombie on him. The Timber Sword has realized. a zombie running. Oh, <laughs> Looks like he's, he's now, just going to sit it back out. and farm the oh, gold. Oh, that was almost a bad... And he Almost does also get crash. reactive armor from those zombies, so maybe a little good for them to attack him a bit so he can get the extra armor and regen. Unfortunately, he'll just miss out on getting that tombstone oh. bounty. So, two levels up in that reactive armor now, so getting quite a lot of regen from being put <laughs> under the tower here. Now, Pudge is going to find an invis rune here. Oh, excellent pickup from Pudge. It's going to be quite dangerous. It is instantly spotted out by the Dire Ward, and it is pinged out by Shadow Shaman, so they do know they have Invis in a bottle, and they're going to have to play quite defensively now. Invisibility in a bottle! And <laughs> Bloodseeker! Someone killed dropped out by like the Centaur, school. thought he could kill it. It only had one hit left, but instead the Bloodseeker goes down and loses quite a bit of gold. Zero reliable gold and sitting at 900 unreliable, so it would have been quite a bit higher than that before the death. So, quite a misplay there from the Yes, Bloodseeker. he's been sitting out there, uh, sitting out there just out of shame. <laughs> you should definitely buy up his spend treads some time before there going in out. Death. But chooses yeah, not I don't know why to. he didn't. Sitting at 1k gold, Maybe he's got a plan. He'd Maybe really he's going straight, straight Mjolnir. Now the Centaur tries to TP into mid to help out, but the Windrunner cancels it off with a shackle shot, so a good little waste of 135 gold. Um, Radiance toughened up their structures. Batrider has picked up a double damage rune, and the Invis Pudge is going to go for the hook and it hits on the one track. This is the um, ultimate Somebody's cooking it's going to be enough to go in there. <laughs> and the Centaur Bat using the dragging. ultimate. Dragging them through that flame. Runner. Shadow Shaman has to be very careful taking quite a bit of damage from the game. Oh, oh almost gets short. hooked. <laughs> Appreciated. The urn coming out from Pudge healing up that. Timbersaw grabbing the Ursa on top lane. Something about that bottom I didn't expect it. Yeah, the uh, Arcane Arcane going on that coming off in dying, one but... second as well. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower? I think the reactive. Your reactive armor, extra armor, and regen is really doing a lot of help in this offlane for him. Taking a lot of auto attacks for that towers regening off on them. Especially against, uh, especially against the Ursa, which de depends so much on those really quick, small attacks. Guess what's happening to the um, It's negating a lot of that sort of build up. And with the, with the Fury swipe stack damage being physical. Um, it also negates the quite a bit best of that do something about them. their bottom yeah, tower. Uh, I think max 12 stacks here. Yeah, just looking at the skills. So that's 12 bonus armor. This early into the game can my really wreak havoc with the physical damage of the Ursa. I think he should go um, 
and rove with the Shrak and, under, and um, Shadow Shaman a bit more. Get Shadow Shaman to use the yeah. Shackle into Split Earth into a Hex, and it's pretty much a guaranteed Dyer's kill with an Ursa there. You know the drill. Yeah, the there's just uh, Centaur just sitting behind the, the Shrak. He's oh, in the trouble. The Ultimate coming up, but a lot of already. Ultimate damage no, coming up from the Shrak, unfortunately. Down. Not enough to come out because the Centaur does step in and help. Yeah, that Les just let himself get walked up to there. Pudge didn't even need to hook. You know the drill. Trying to play a bit of the table game with Pudge in the middle. Going, going to the other sides of the creek so that just allows Robert. Centaur to come in. Dyer's top the Ultimate towers get beat from, down. From that right, but unable to do it. Meanwhile, the Pudge is trying to no, go Centaur in. Centaur wants to go in and gets <laughs> hooked back. Hooked back after the show has been filled up and an excellent power <laughs> shot from the Windrunner kills off the Pudge. <laughs> I actually like that hook that, that hooked him back. It's, it's put him in a good position. Yeah, it was actually quite good. Oh, and now in a very bad position. But, uh, <laughs> and he's going to be able to walk away from this with the tank that he has. He's going to walk away, yeah. Oh, Ooh, good shackle on the... Getting a shackle on the... Uh, oh, that's a lot, lot of damage. Oh! <laughs> gets him, though. The rupture get that gets rap enough damage for the return damage from the center wall runner to get the, the final shot. And the Batrider will go down to have an auto attack. Tough. Infinity on fire right now. Unfortunately, not getting that shackle to land. And the, the, the oh, Centaur just walks back and, and the him down. Thing I'm gonna do. Oh, but the, <laughs> the, the power are coming Oh, through. yes, he is. The wind run runs out just in time, and the decay misses from the Undying. Undying still going. Excellent play there from the Centaur Warrunner. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of friendly trash talk coming out from the centaur. Mm. And we see the XP 10k in favor of the Radiant, and the gold about 6k in favor. Another kill coming out for the Punch, but an ultimate is going to be a double kill for the Punch. And this game, heavily this beat's gonna be awesome. even though, oh, the Bloodseeker is gone for a, a hand of Midas, not actually using it at the moment. Um, Probably not the best pickup on a blood sinker just because he doesn't really have much auto attack damage early on, even with that silence going on him. Um, the Hand of Midas doesn't really offer much in the attack speed. It does help his jungle a little, um, but yes. he hasn't kept it off cooldown so far, and I believe he Not if you don't it use it, late. yeah. <laughs> exactly. He does go and use it on the Centaur, and I believe Hand of Midas also triggers the Bloodbath. Um, so quite a good way to get some burst health in the middle of a fight if it's needed. Hmm. But only if you leave it off cooldown. Oh, oh which cool. you know what we're doing. You know? The rupture comes out, but it's under exactly. a tower. The split earth comes out tower. and hits on the blood seeker, you know the drill. And he gets hooked back Punch by the punch. So there. some good play, even an urn charge coming out, so the blood seeker being Dyer's saved top from an embarrassing death. Does, uh, does rupture but does it have synergy with Meat Hook? I mean, it does Dyer's actually. Dyer's it does Dyer's have its distance Dyer's travel. Dyer's so if you Dyer's rupture Dyer's someone, gone. and you obviously they'll stand still, some of the, the punch can then come and hook in, um, and it will do extra damage based on the hook distance travel. The stun to coming out, and this is going to be a very deadly try. Seven in a row. Oh, and the ward like trap the by the Shadow Shaman. Somebody that's going to be his death. The the yes. Oh, he's going to hook him to death, though. <laughs> and meanwhile, the uh, Timbersaw getting a kill on the back end does have the Ring of Health up the trying to farm up these in the top tower. But um, these zombies doing a lot of damage. Finally able to kill off that tombstone. Um, unfortunately not being able to Yeah, zombies and there. wards sitting next to each other is very dangerous. Definitely. And let's see, the Midas is almost off cooldown, so let's see after he kills this creep. Trouble brewing that radiance bottom tower. Takes the other one out. It does! There you go. Dyer's the buff is top triggered from Midas, it does nice. count as a creep death. I thought yeah, it might just say that earlier on, he was just saving. Uh, yeah. I'd say he was just. Uh, saving that Dyer's Midas earlier on in lane because it does give you more XP if you can Midas a large creep with it. It does. So, I mean, it's a bit of a trade off there. And we see the Timbersaw able to buy up his Perseverance. Much longer. Um, might just be waiting and, and get a point booster instead, but I think the mana regen is a lot more useful. Dyer's mid tower could use a little help. Just being able to tank up these heroes so easily. 
Dyer's mid tower won't last. Meanwhile, the Dyer are holding decks up at top here. <laughs> Dyer's mid tower could use a little help. There comes the shaft pull shot, but he's gonna get hit by the ultimate. The spinning, whirling blade of doom. Oh, that was track ulti really doing its work. Timbersaw's gonna chain away. Oh, the power shot almost picks him up, but doesn't quite get it. Windrunner manages to just shackle, doesn't latch. She's got mana enough for another power shot. She's gonna hit it off, but it's gonna be just out of range. Meanwhile, the centaur takes out the Latrak, and it looks like he's going to farm up this tombstone, now it's going to go out too late. The Pudge sitting very dangerous here, both of them just not reacting for a very long time, obviously not looking. <laughs> we see the centaur oh, walk in front and it the centaur, but a very easy kill in the Big end. Plays. The wards have been thrown down, if he manages to shackle that centaur, no he can't, for some reason. <laughs> Hooked in and the rod is going to be enough to kill him off. Oh, yeah. Shackles! Shackles into the rotting budge. <laughs> I love it. Close range shackle. And boots to travel up on that budge now, so no Pudge problems. Budge in a blind hook just in case. <laughs> and you should try and use these urn charges and bottle charges now while the decay is, has him at lower health. Doing just that. I would like to see Pudge buy a 4 star. <laughs> Just for that extra chase. Meanwhile, the Radiant does farm up He does, up those he does have the boots of travel, so... <laughs> I'd actually like to... Yeah, the, the, yeah actually the force stuff, yeah. That was also is going to synergize well with the Bloodseeker. Uh, yeah, definitely. And the Rupture does come yeah, out again, so he's just going to have to stand here while the rest of the Radiant come up. Yeah. But Five he does get the kill off with the ultimate. To the bottom. I bind you! The uh, path is paved with bones. Oh, the timber chain. Timber saw able to get away. Right now. Needs no, to he... throw out some whirling death in timber chain. Man, they like the feel of my old Very back between my legs. The zombies are bloodlusted. The timber chain thrown out gets him to safety again. Oh, the wind runner power shot takes him down to 40 health. But the f the um Radiance mid tower could use a hand. Reactive armor keeping him alive. Yeah, those fourteen stacks of uh, of reactive armor helping out a lot. <laughs> and this Ursa does have the Vlad sub and the smoke, but still not going into Roshan. And at level eight at nineteen minutes in, it's gonna be a bit difficult, I gotta say, especially um without some help. Usually I yeah, can solo on up very down. easily, but very, very underleveled. And, and oddly enough, the level 15 Pudge is hiding. <laughs> Waiting for a hook. Just just go in! Just take him! <laughs> just walk it's up with good. the boots to travel, and it, it looks like Tish is building just a four star. Possibly getting the hood of the vines, gonna build it into a pipe. Um, with a ring of regen picked up, but usually if you're going the, um, the hood kind of direction, you'll buy up the cloak first. Especially as the pledge. So they're actually going on the back end here. The Ursa is going to be taken here. down by the stun and firefly damage. Wise, wise. Oh, but an excellent timber chain in. The chakra is thrown out instead of rolling the other way. The centaur is taking a lot of damage. And it looks like they're just going to be 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 going and these zombies! Will the zombies get the kills? No, they're gonna no, be able to take them down. Bloodseeker's just healing on them. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, will Bloodseeker walk too close oh, to the wards? Oh! Timbersaw, the only like one that can safely take them down. No, he's no, gonna he's back just gonna off. Believe. A lot of hooks and chains and swords and things on this team. <laughs> Yeah, and Windrunner has both the game and already left, so good games coming out from the rest of the Dire side. I want to see a Pudge, Timbersaw, Clockwork team. <laughs> chains flying everywhere. <laughs> Radiant's top tower is hurt. quite funny. Dire's <laughs> mid tower is having technical difficulties. Radiant's top tower is in bad shape. 
bottom tower got blown So it's going to be bedtime Fairly for well. both myself and Danilus. <laughs> the rest of the dives still haven't quit out. Um, but uh, it looks like Dyer's they are now. tower won't last much longer. <laughs> <laughs> the track getting a, uh, oh, a blind a split over there. <laughs> the ultimate thrown out. <laughs> yeah, was gonna take <laughs> just it. walks in and oh, <laughs> destroys the Lishrak. Uh, alrighty, well, GG, well played. We'll just wait for the rest to disconnect to um, get this scoreboard up. Danavis has already DC'd, so good night, Danavis. Um, Thank you for co-casting with me. Big Here's what's out. happening to Dyer's bottom tower. <laughs> scoreboard come up. No the Dyer gave Tempest up the bottom tower. <laughs> and punch committing suicide. And I believe laughing about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the centaur just... The radiant dice. And there we go. The base has exploded. Well played for the radiant. A final score of... 28-11, 30k experience in the lead and 20k gold, a commanding victory. And there you can see the final items, just pretty much a walk over the, the Ursa, not being able to achieve much, being underleveled and underfarmed, not going for those solo Roshan early on, unfortunately. So, um, good game, well played. That'll be it for me tonight, so thank you for tuning in if you did. Um, my the videos will be up on the youtube let me throw up the links here vods will go up on youtube tomorrow on youtube.com forward slash spec dota and up on my twitch at twitch.tv forward slash spec dota if you want to follow me you will get email alerts every time the stream goes live i probably stream about four nights out of seven depending on what i'm doing um so yeah tune in if you enjoyed thank you very much for watching